All right, so this is gonna be super interesting. I'm actually gonna compare a doctor's pay slip to a nurse's pay slip, see what the actual differences are, how much they get paid versus what a doctor gets paid. It's gonna be a pay slip for a graduate nurse. Essentially, that means that they are in their first year of doing nursing, sort of similar to an internship for a doctor. So their first year of working, let's go through their pay slip, see how much they actually get paid. And then what I'm gonna do is actually compare that to a doctor's pay slip so you can see the differences. There's a whole lot of discussion whenever I post something about my pay slips and how it's not that much or how it's really, you know, less than what nurses earn or whatever. So let's put it to the test, see an actual real life pay slip from this year and compare it to what I earned this year. And then what I wanna do is actually compare it to a pay slip that I got in my first year working as a doctor, albeit that is two years ago, compare that to the actual rates now for interns, and then also compare it to one of the pay slips that I got this year as well. So we can sort of do some sort of comparison there and see how it all adds up. All right, let's go through it. Okay, so here we have a nurse's pay slip Let's just orientate ourselves and we can sort of figure out what's what in this. I think the first thing to see is the top left, which is the position that they're a graduate nurse. They've got this classification of YP2 nurse grade and I think they've got the date of when the pay slip was given. Sorry, no, that's something different. So they've got the classification of their nurse grade, YP2, and uh, I'm not too sure, I'm not too sure what that means, but probably relates to you know how much they get paid and everything like that. We can see the date here. So the beginning date was the 26th of Feb, the end date was the 10th of the 3rd, and that's when they got paid. So it's gonna be over a fortnight in which this pay slip was uh, given. So let's have a look at the hourly rate and how much they actually worked. So you can see up here, they've got this annual base salary of about $57,000. Um, and of course it doesn't account for like any overtime or anything like that. For their ordinary hours, they've actually worked 64 hours in that fortnight and they've got a pretty good hourly rate of about $34 per hour. That amount equates to $2,187. They did a few afternoon shifts, which is similar to our shifts in the sense that if you finish after 6 p.m., then you get a little bit of an extra bonus because it's a, essentially like a later shift. Uh, so they did that six times in that fortnight. And then each time they do that shift, it's $32.5. So yeah, so that all adds up to about $200. Shift penalty at 50%, uh, potentially that's just like, so potentially I think that the penalty shift at 50%, so maybe this uh, penalty shift was done on a weekend or something and they got a bit of extra cash for it and that was 16 hours worth of that. So that's just under $300. And it looks like they actually have a laundry allowance too, which is paid for them by the hospital. Not too much, 64 hours and they get paid at a rate of seven cents, what? Anyways, they get five bucks, they get, a, they get almost a free coffee. So it looks like this person pays for a car park fee and maybe it's something that the hospital does or organizes for them. So they can just deduct that directly from their pay cycle and that costs about $80. So all up, the gross amount is $2,575. And then the amount of tax that they pay on that is $600. Note that there's no salary packaging or any other like weird bonuses or anything like that included in this. Um, the amount that they take home is just under two grand for that pay cycle. So that's, um, that's not too dissimilar to an intern's pay cycle. I remember when I was first you know, working as a doctor you know, a couple years ago now, that's, yeah, it's only about two years ago or so. And I reckon if there was not much like overtime or afternoon shifts or any other like add-on benefits or salaried packaging or anything, I would probably take home in my bank account around about 2,300. That's what I would like budget for. So this is not too dissimilar to that. And we would actually not work 64 hours. We would actually work 76 hours. So it's a 38 hour week and then that's split over two weeks. There you go, 76 hours in the, in the fortnight, well in the pay period. And 
that's what we would do as um, as interns. So the base salary is not too dissimilar to an intern's. I'll bring up my old intern pay cycle. Yeah, let's actually do that now. I'll bring up my old um, intern pay slip and we can go through that. Okay, so this is actually one of the pay slips that I got as an intern. This is um, a couple years back now. So you can see this was in 2022, so two years ago. We can have a look at the you know, the de we can have a look at the details of the pay slip and sort of equate that to, you know, the actual nurse's pay slip that we just saw before. So we can see here the hourly rate is um, almost $40 an hour, comparing that to the nurse's pay slip that was a little bit less. So the nurse's uh, pay slip this year for a grad nurse was $34 per hour, whereas my hourly rate two years ago as an intern was $39.9 an hour, pretty much $40. For some reason I worked 71.5 hours this pay slip. I'm trying to think why that would work. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure. Maybe I just didn't get rostered um, enough shifts or something like that. Anyways, I'm not too sure about how that worked. I think I followed that up with the, um, the pay office because even if we don't uh, get scheduled for um, 76 hours per fortnight, we're eligible to get paid for 76 hours per fortnight. That's in our contract that we sign. So anyways, it should be about 76 hours. Um, so like a little bit less, but just under three grand for that. We do actually get um, medical education allowance. So essentially an allowance that we get to use for our study and learning and put towards those sort of things. So that actually wasn't on the nurse's pay slip. We've got a similar thing with the afternoon shift, uh, sort of like a bonus thing for finishing a little bit later than usual. Uh, we define it as um, if you finish after 6 p.m. So that happened twice in this pay slip and uh, we get $37 um, for that. Comparing that back to the nurse's pay slip, they get $32 and a half dollars for that. So. That's pretty similar, to be honest. Um, we actually get a meal allowance. That's because we did some overtime. Potentially nurses would also get that, but on that particular pay slip, uh, they didn't get any overtime, so therefore no meal allowance as well. Um, and then I'm not too sure about this unauthorized ABS WOC. Anyways, nothing happened for that, so whatever that is. Um, we actually pay a slightly bit more tax because our gross amount is slightly higher. Um, we also have this RMO club, which is like the junior doctor society. We pay them a, um, a certain fee and then they provide us with like, you know, resources and, you know, Friday lunches and all that sort of thing. Um, there's also a portion of this uh, payslip that was salary packaged. So taking all this into account, we ended up taking home this pay cycle, $2,472, but Adding on to that would be the salary packaged money that doesn't directly um, get taken into account in this net. It's a deduction, but it's still mine. So closer to about three grand for this. If we actually just take off all the overtime though and the meal allowance, that amount comes to pretty much around two grand, uh, maybe just a bit over if we include the salary packaging. So pretty similar. I mean, it's only just a slightly higher hourly rate. We get some medical education allowance. And then for this particular pay slip, um, have some overtime as well. But yeah, nurses can salary package just as well as doctors and other health professionals. Um, they may or may not have this like nurses, you know, organization or club or whatever that they, that they put money towards. Uh, but yeah, I didn't have a, car park fee that I got deducted from as well. So there you go. That's my pay slip as a intern that was two years ago. Yeah, so if you've never been on DIT Paycheck before, this is a super interesting website to actually just figure out what your money is doing as a doctor and how it progresses. This is all specific to Victoria and all based on this EBA. That lasts from 2022 to 2026. So it's got a few more years left in it before it just updates and then DIT Paycheck will just update as well. Yeah, you can just use this toggle bar under the rates heading and you can just pick what level you are. So say if you're a registrar U1, it'll update, give you an hourly rate, give you the weekends, 
public holidays, night rates, and everything like that. Just comparing it to first year intern, they're actually earning a bit more per hour, so $42 per hour. We were earning $39.9 an hour back when I was an intern, and nurses were on $34 an hour. Okay, so pretty similar, all right? And then you can work out all this other stuff as well. So we've actually got a few more payslips to go through for the graduate nurse payslip. And we can have a look at that, see if there's any other changes that might occur, any more like complex things that might pop up on the payslip and go from there. So this is a different payslip. Um, still from a graduate nurse, you can see the same position up there, the same classification. A little bit later this year, so from the 6th of May to the 19th of May. And yeah, again, it's just a two week um, payslip period. So you can see that this is actually a combination of working some normal hours at 24 hours worked at the same rate. And then because there was some actual annual leave included as well as some study leave, then those are paid at that same rate as well. Um, so yeah, as you, yeah, annual leave, study leave, all this leave is paid at just a normal base rate. Uh, you are entitled to leave as a nurse, as a doctor, as like any like, you know, professional worker. And yeah, you just get paid out. So that's how it looks on the payslip like that. Um, this person worked three days that they finished after 6 p.m. or whatever the nursing equivalent is. If it's, you know, finish after 5 p.m. or 7 p.m. or whatever it is, they did some afternoon shift uh, three times and that was paid at a rate of $32.5. So three of those equates to just under $100. They also got some laundry allowance for the hours that they were on annual leave. So not the ordinary hours, but the annual leave hours. Okay, so you get half a coffee for that and they get some leave loading. So I'm not too sure how that sort of works or if all this doesn't add up to the normal payslip they get. So this is 24 hours of ordinary work they had eight hours of study leave, so eight plus 24 is 32, and then leave loading is 32 plus 32, which is, okay, actually no, that, that all adds up to 64. Yeah, this actually all adds up to 64 hours because we've got 24 plus eight, which is 32, and then plus another 32 is 64. So the ordinary hours, the annual leave, and the study leave all adds up to 64 hours, which is probably what nurses are allocated for, at least a graduate nurse role in this particular hospital, uh, 64 hours per fortnight. And for some reason they get some leave loading, so maybe a bit of extra cash before they go on their leave. And yeah, that's just about $150. They actually show some salary packaging as well on this payslip, so you have to pay a fee to the salary packaging company uh, before you can actually do this salary packaging thing. If you haven't heard about salary packaging, have no idea what it is, what it looks like, how it works, I've got another video that goes through that, so you can just click on that in the description, and yeah, you can actually learn a little bit more about how salary packaging works and looks on a payslip. But for now, we'll just focus on this one. You've got the salary packaging fee, which is about $8. Uh, I think it ends up being, what, what's eight times 12? Sorry, what's eight times like 20? Um, it's not too much. It's just under about $200 or so for the total fee for the year and it can be divided over fortnights. Yeah, and it, and the fee to the salary packaging company is actually a deduction before tax as well. So this person allocated just under $400, $377 to the salary packaging company. On the payslip, it looks as a deduction because that amount comes off the, you know, the gross amount that they earned and then gets transferred into the salary packaging company's account that's under your name. So if I had a salary packaging account, the money would get taken from my payslip that I worked at the hospital, go into that salary packaging company's account, and then would wait for me to either reimburse or spend that money myself. And then, yeah, that can either come back to me or just get used to spend on other stuff that I want. So just bear in mind that the take-home pay, this will actually be also like added on in real life, but not included in the, in the net amount. So they've also got some car park expenses as well. Same as last pay sleep, they allocated $80 to, you know, be able to park around the hospital. And yeah, total deductions is around $465. So 
the gross amount that is taxable is $1,972. They got taxed only $314. And then in the bank account, the take home pay was $1,660. The actual amount that they would have had is $1,660 plus $460. So it's gonna be just over two grand. Amount that they actually get um, taken home is gonna be $1,660. That's gonna go in their bank account that they allocated, but then the salary packaging um, company will also give access to these funds that were allocated before tax. So $377 plus $1,660, it's just gonna be slightly over two grand, and that's how much they earned in that pay cycle. And you've also got like this year-to-date superannuation as well, which is cool. There you go, there's another graduate nurse pay slip all analyzed. All right, let's go through one more pay slip for a grad nurse that we can look at, and then we, yeah, just compare it to stuff that we see on our pay slips. So, yeah, you can see in this one, there's 64 hours of work. It's paid at the rate of $34 an hour. Also, this is in March, end of March to April as well, this pay cycle. They've got some study leave, which is paid at the base rate. They did five afternoon shifts that uh, get paid at a rate of $32 and a half dollars um, for each afternoon shift. They worked a public holiday and that is paid at 100% rate. So that is $34 an hour, and that, which is their base rate. And then they have a shift penalty of 50%, so about $136, and laundry allowance, which is a little coffee for them. Car park is deducted from them, and they get some income, income tax as well. So it looks like for this one, they actually worked a little bit more than the 64 hours. They did the 64 hours, they also got some study leave, and it looks like they probably picked up a um, public holiday shift as well because their total amount is you know, $3,421. That's slightly more than they've earned in the last other pay cycles. They get taxed a bit more because the gross amount is higher. $954 goes to tax, but they end up taking home $2,387. So there's no salary packaging here uh, for whatever reason, maybe it's maxed out or they didn't want to allocate it for this pay cycle, whatever it is, but they actually end up taking $2,387 home. These pay slips are actually not too dissimilar to an intern's pay slip that I got a few years ago. It wouldn't be, you know, majorly different to an intern who's not working any overtime, who's not doing any extra shifts or anything like that this year. Um, the rate is slightly lower, so $34 an hour versus an intern's rate is 40, what was it again? Yeah, so it is slightly lower for a graduate nurse, $34 an hour, and intern's rate for this year, which is $42 an hour. Slightly higher for an intern, you're gonna make a little bit more cash, but in the big scheme of things, it's very similar, and it might just be a couple hundred dollars difference if there's no like extra overtime or added stuff that's on the pay slip that increases the total amount, such as salary packaging, etc. There you go, nurse's pay slip for a graduate nurse versus an intern's pay slip from a couple years ago and also comparing it to the rates for this year. I think it's actually pretty good to have an idea of how much other people are earning in the hospital. I know that you know different people earn different amounts. Sometimes you're not actually sure like how much this person is earning versus what you earn and how to compare it and all. And it's actually pretty similar in the public hospital setting. Obviously private land is a whole different ball game and you know you can earn a lot more in private, especially at the senior levels, whether it be you know working as a consultant or private assisting or yeah, potentially like nurses and stuff probably earn a little bit more in private as well. I'm actually not too sure, but we can actually do that in the future to check all that out. But there you go. Now you know the difference between a nurse's pay slip for their first year versus a doctor's pay slip for their first year. I think it's a good bit of perspective to see how much other people earn compared to you. And, you know, just lay it all out in the open. This is like all really transparent and 
It shouldn't be something that we don't talk about. It should be something that we actually want to know more about how it works, break it down and learn heaps about. We'll go through some more specialties and compare them to a doctor's payslip in the future videos. And I'm actually really interested to see how a doctor's payslip in Australia might compare to a payslip in the UK versus the USA versus other countries in the world. It's super interesting to put it into perspective and see how much they're actually working versus how much they actually get reimbursed and you know take home pay and you might be working say 70 hours in a fortnight and someone in the usa might work 70 hours in a week and still earn less than you so it's crazy anyways we'll see you next time bye